Yo, 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 what's going on, everyone? You already know it's your boy Fire Dragon CK, and I'm back again with another video. This time, a little bit something different. This is going to be a casual um, UI walkthrough of the PlayStation 5. Um, there are a lot more walkthroughs of the UI for the PS5. You could check out uh, Mystics, who probably did the best one out of all the ones I've seen. This is just gonna be something casual, you know, a little chit chat one-on-one -on -one where I just talk to viewers and basically I just show you guys the basics of the PS5. So it's gonna be a, a lot more casual than Mystics, right? So as you can see, we have the home screen right here. So when you load up the console, when you load up your PS5, this is the first thing you're going to see. And as you can see right now, I'm on the PlayStation Store, but you wouldn't be here necessarily. When you load up your console, this is where you're going to be. You're gonna be on the last game that you played. And as you can see, in my case, it's The Last of Us Part Two, right? So basically it orders the games from, from order, right? So the last game I played was Last of Us Part Two. Then it was MKX, Knockout City, game I recently downloaded, Shadow of War, Middle Earth, like you get the drift, right? So basically it orders your game from most recently played to least recently played. All right, so you have that, that's your games. And I'll show you where the rest of your games are in a little bit. Let's go to the PlayStation Store, right? As you guys know, if you have a PlayStation 4, you have the PlayStation Store, you click on the app. It takes a while to load up and then you're into the store. What's a bit different with the PlayStation Store here on the PS5 is, it's basically built into, you, in, into the UI basically, right? So if I hit the X button, right, you're gonna see, I'm, I'm already in the PlayStation Store. You see what I mean? Like it's, it's part of the user interface. See, so I can see the latest stuff here, you know, games of play, what they're advertising, PlayStation Plus collection, this type of stuff, you know, Biomutant that recently came out, Mass Effect Legendary Edition, things like that. They have stuff like Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, basically just advertising games that are, are either out or are going to be out, right? And I will be getting this game day one, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, so I'll probably will review that in the future. But anyways, let's go up um collections you see that has different things like games are upgraded for ps5 meaning that these games either got native ps5 patches um or they have ps5 ports like full-blown ps5 versions basically so that's basically what these are actually not even sorry these are games that have actual ps5 ports so that's why you see mk11 here right because there's a native ps5 port as as Creed Valhalla has a native PS5 port, Destiny 2, right? But you're not going to see a game like, say, The Last of Us 2. Because The Last of Us 2 doesn't have a PS5 version, but it has a patch on the PS4 version, which unlocks the frame rate. So basically, The Last of Us 2 is still very much a PS4 game, but it just now runs at 60 frames per second because it could take advantage of the PS5 hardware. So that's basically what happened with games like Last of Us Part 2 and games like Ratchet and Clank. You know, the frame rate was doubled in these games on PS5. Um, going back to the store, um, let's keep going. You know, you have stuff like monthly picks and all that horror. As you can see, that's a picture of that lady from Resident Evil 8. Um, yeah, this is where I usually stay in the PS Store, you know, like days of play and retro remaster sales and stuff like that. So the store is pretty self-explanatory, right? I think we could all know what the store has to offer. Um, let's go back. Let's go over here. So this is where your media gallery is. So you know when you save screenshots or you know videos, this is where they're kept in the PlayStation 5 media gallery. So I'll click this right here, to show you. As you can see, these are the latest clips that I have, stuff from Mortal Kombat mainly. I also have other stuff too, like this is a screenshot that I took in The Last of Us Part 2. Um, this is also something else from The Last of Us Part 2. More clips and screenshots and stuff. I'm not going to show any more because I don't want to spoil the game entirely, but you get the drift. Um, trophies. So basically, the PlayStation 5 also takes short videos or screenshots of you earning trophies in games. So that's basically what these are. These are just me earning trophies and the PS5 saving the screenshot or the video of me doing that, right? And then this is album. So let's say I wanna check out specific content I saved or recorded. Let's say I wanna only access my Mortal Kombat X footage. I'm just gonna go here to Mortal Kombat X. I can also hit the options button. 
um, which selects multiple items. So I could, so let's say I only want to see Mortal Kombat X and Mortal Kombat 11. I can do that. You feel me? You can also go over here to the side where it says select multiple, and you can also do it that way. If you go back over here, sorry, this right here shows media type, right? So if I only want to see video clips, like watch, if I go to the Mortal Kombat folder, right? Mortal Kombat XL, it's only going to show me the video clips I have because I selected it to do that. Only show me my videos. But if I go back and let's say I want to do, maybe I only want to see my screenshots and no videos. Vice versa. It's only going to show me all the screenshots I have, basically. So you have that. Um, what else can we do? Let's go all the way over here. So these are basically where the rest of your games are. So right here, we can click game library, right? And it shows your collection. So game library, your collection. This is basically every single game that you've ever played, whether it be PlayStation Now, whether it be, you know, on PlayStation Plus and things like that. But if you want to go to your installed games, you can basically see all the games currently on your console. So right here we have console storage, right? This shows me all the games that I currently have installed on the PlayStation 5 SSD. So we have Destiny 2, the PS5 version, PS5 version of Avengers, Demon Souls, this game Astro's Playroom, which comes pre-installed on every PlayStation 5, PS5 version of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, um, MK11 PS5, Spider-Man Miles Morales, Devil May Cry 5, Marvel Spider-Man Remastered, you get the drift. And here you could also do remote play, which is basically if you want to play your PS5 from your PS4, you could also do that here. And this is also where you can find PlayStation Now content as well, right? So this is all the stuff installed on my PS5 because you cannot install PS5 games on an external hard drive. They have to be installed on the internal SSD. So now you have USB extended storage, 55 games. So these are all the games installed on my uh, extended storage, my um, external hard drive, my two terabyte external hard drive. Um, Knockout City, which I just recently got, you know, Thief. This game was like $3, so I bought it. Uh, Naruto Shippuden, Ultimate Ninja Storm Trilogy, which is Ninja Storm 1, 2, and 3. Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, which I recently platinumed. Horizon Zero Dawn. Mortal Kombat 11. Now some may ask, you know, what, what's the point, you know, of you having the PS4 version of Mortal Kombat 11? And then also having the PS5 version. Why do you have two versions of Mortal Kombat 11? Well, the reason why, guys, is because for some reason there are glitches. Like, if I have the PS5 version and I try to play with some friends on PS4, for some reason we can't really invite each other or play with each other. Like, I can play a 1v1 match with PS4 players, but I can't join a cop of PS4 players unless I play the PS4 version. So that's why I keep both versions installed. So whether somebody has PS5 or PS4, I can still play with them. Um, also, I have Rayman Legends here, Mortal Kombat X, of course. Um, Monster Hunter World. This is um, with PlayStation Plus. So if I click on a game, right? If you notice at the top where it shows the title of the game, Monster Hunter World Iceborne, it shows PS4 and it also has the Plus logo. So... What those icons mean at the top is the first one is PS4 to indicate that it's a PS4 game. Next to that, you have the Plus logo to indicate that I have it because I'm a member of PlayStation Plus. And then that little icon that you see right there um, next to the Plus symbol shows that it's on an extended storage device. So it basically shows that it's on an external hard drive. So even if I go back here to the main um, home screen, right? If you notice, it'll show you The Last of Us Part 2. You see PS4. And then it'll show the USB storage device icon. Mortal Kombat XL, PS4, the USB storage device icon. So you'll never be able to confuse PS4 and PS5 games because it'll just show you right away. So watch, right? If I go to a PS5 game, right? So this is a game installed on my console storage. So let's say I loaded up, uh, I don't know, Demon Souls, right? See at the top where I, where I have Demon Souls, it just shows the title of the game, right? It just says Demon Souls because it's a PS5 game. So since it's a PS5 game and I actually own it and it's on my main console storage, it's just, gonna, it's just gonna show the title of the game. But if I go over here to, let's say Mortal Kombat, I think actually, you know what? The best way to uh, show you this is with Mortal Kombat 11, right? PS5 version of Mortal Kombat 11 just shows Mortal Kombat 11, right? But the PS4 version shows Mortal Kombat 11 PS4 and then the extended storage icon. 
So that's how you won't be able to confuse PS4 and PS5 games. The PS4 version will say PS4 on it. The PS5 game, if it just shows the title of the game, that's how you know that it's it's a PS5 game. So there you go. I'm moving on with some more games I have installed. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, which I have due to PlayStation Plus. The Last Guardian, PlayStation Plus, Final Fantasy 15, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, um, Soul Calibur 6. I have this game with all the DLC, but I haven't gotten really around to learning Soul Calibur. So maybe I'll actually eventually learn it in the future. Um, let's see. Oh, we have Resident Evil games. Yeah, Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 5, Resident Evil 6. And Resident Evil 7, as I said before earlier. The only one I need to get is the new one, Resident Evil 8 Village. Um, have time to play that. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, this game has also been patched to run at 60 frames per second on the PlayStation 5. I'll also indicate, guys, on um, which games have been patched to take advantage of PS5's hardware if you wish to know. Um, not really too many of these games have. Like Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, this game runs at a locked 60 frames per second on PS5, but... It also had a 60 frames mode on PS4 Pro as well. Um, this game I know, like I said, this is 60 frames. Don't May Cry uh, Definitive Edition. I believe this runs at 60 frames per second as well, but I believe it ran at 60 frames per second even on the PS4. So, as you see, we have Don't May Cry. Um, this is the PS5 Definitive Edition, which got remastered for PS4. Days Gone, this originally came out in 2019, I believe. And this game I have due to PlayStation Plus, but I also own it as well. So, yeah, I kind of have this game twice. So even if I run out of PlayStation Plus, I would still own it. This game got patched to run at 60 frames per second. War of the Monsters, this is originally a PS2 game that got ported for the PS4. Grand Theft Auto 3, same thing, PS2 game. Jack and Daxter 1, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, San Andreas, uh, Jack 3, Jack 2, Jack X. These are all PS2 games that got ported to the PS4 um dragon ball fighters i have this game i guys i have not gotten around to learning this game so i'm gonna have to take some time out to really sit down with it shout the colossus this is a ps2 game but this is not a ps4 port this is a full-blown ps4 remake so it's not just the ps2 game it's actually the ps2 game completely remade from the ground up with new textures and assets so this is a full-blown remake Devil May Cry HD Collection, so this has Devil May Cry 1, 2, and 3, all remastered for the PlayStation 4. So we have every Devil May Cry game, Devil May Cry 1, 2, and 3, this is Devil May Cry 4 right here, remastered. Like I said, the Devil May Cry remake for PS4, and then on the PS5, we have Devil May Cry 5, the PS5 version. So all the Devil May Cry games I have, um, Rise of the Tomb Raider, um, I have the whole Tomb Raider trilogy, like I said, this is the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. Then over here, like I said, this is Rise of the Tomb Raider. And then we have the third installment which in the trilogy, which is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So for those that want to play the Tomb Raider games in order, they basically go from, again, Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. This was the first one in the um, remake of the trilogy. Then Rise of the Tomb Raider and then Shadow of the Tomb Raider. All great games. I just haven't gotten around to playing them because I have too many. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel. This is a fun game that I recommend playing if you have multiple people, if you're going to play multiplayer. Really fun racing game. Infamous Second Son. These are all games, like I said, guys, on my external hard drive. Ratchet & Clank. Like I said, this game got updated to run at 60 frames per second on PS5. Um, Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. Oh, yeah, this is the, the definitive experience, so it comes with both. It comes with Ground Zeroes and The Phantom Pain. I forgot that I actually own the definitive edition. Injustice 2. This is actually Injustice 2 Legendary Edition, so it comes with all the DLC. Like, Injustice 2, again, guys, like, I don't have all this time to actually learn all these games. Uh, Bloodborne. One of the games that I'm so happy is here that it's included as part of PlayStation Plus, but it sucks that it does not have a PS5 update. This game, sadly, still runs at 30 frames, and... I can only imagine what this game would be like if it got updated for the PS5 to run at 60 frames. I really believe that it should. Sony, please look into that. The Last of Us Remastered, which as you know is a PS3 game that got updated for PS4. This runs at 60 frames. God of War 3 Remastered runs at 60 frames as well. Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt. Um, This game runs at 60 frames if you have the disc version. If you have the disc version that isn't updated with any patches, 
then you could play this game at 60 frames per second but unfortunately if you have the digital version like me this game runs at 30 frames but there's going to be a ps5 version being put out really soon um cd project red already confirmed that so there will be a native ps5 version of the witcher 3 which is going to allow the game to run at a lock 60 frames um dc universe online i used to play this game a lot back in the day especially during the ps3 era i played it a little bit on ps4 and i haven't touched it yet on ps5 maybe i'll get back into my um my mmos eventually i'll play this game it was really fun though and it's really fun with friends um naruto ninja storm 4 as i mentioned before i had the ninja storm trilogy which had one two and three here's four right here the uncharted collection uncharted is one two and three updated for 60 frames per second on ps4 um return to arkham this is the batman game so this is arkham asylum right here i believe i also have arkham city i just don't have arkham city installed but i actually have arkham city i just don't have it installed but yeah i have arkham city and arkham asylum ghost of tsushima this game is absolutely fantastic as you can see i have the platinum trophy 84 percent because i platinum the main story but i still have to get all the online trophies from the dlc so those little dlc trophies are the only ones i have left but the main game i definitely platinumed as you can see the main story i, I platinum this game is an absolute masterpiece if you have it on if you only have it on ps4 still buy it it's still a classic and especially if you have a ps5 there's no reason not to play it because this game in 60 frames per second amazing amazing absolutely godlike um god of war another game that got updated to run at 60 frames per second at 4k on ps5 gorgeous absolutely gorgeous game tekken 7 probably one of the most challenging fighting games there is to play at a high level but i love the tekken franchise as you can see i even platinum tekken 7 got 100 trophies really great game and it's thriving so well competitively the competitive scene of tekken 7 is is freaking awesome middle earth shadow of war which i already showed you guys before um uncharted 4 a thief's end this game sadly runs at 1440p and it's not 60 frames it is only 30 frames i would love to see naughty dog make a playstation 5 update for this so that way it could run at 60 frames but this game is still a masterpiece whether you play it on P at 30 frames or 60 on ps4 or ps5 it's a masterpiece batman arkham knight this was a great game but sadly this game again only runs at 30 frames per second which is such a shame because this game i don't think it's better than arkham city but i think it was a, a nice decent end to the arkham trilogy and this game it's funny because graphically it's the best game out of the three in terms of graphics it's definitely the best game of the three in terms of the gameplay but what really hurts hurt this game a lot was the story so this game to me is better is the best batman game in terms of graphics and gameplay but story-wise it's um prequel um arkham city was much better honestly in terms of story arkham city was the best of the three but gameplay wise and graphically this one is the best and then the last of us part two which is the game that i'm currently playing through now right so this just gave you guys a glimpse into the games that i have installed and what i'm playing so we have that so game library we went over the installed section playstation plus so this shows all the games that we have for playstation plus and this shows you your free monthly games that come with it oh maybe i should i should claim these games right oh i actually did claim them already okay good battlefield 5 yeah i claimed all these games already good so battlefield 5 we get stranded deep we get you know and this is something that's exclusive to PlayStation Plus on PS5, which is the PlayStation Plus collection. So basically, you, you get 20 free games if you're on PlayStation Plus. So in addition to the monthly games that you get, you also get these 20 games completely for free, right? Which are a lot of these games you saw, like, I'll just go over the ones that I didn't show already, right? Like um, Battlefield 1, I have it, but it's not installed on my system. So that's why you didn't see it. Persona 5, I have, right? um call of duty black ops 3 i'm not really a big cod guy but the game is free so of course i'm gonna claim it detroit become human um until dawn and then all the other games i have currently installed on my system right but here's the thing guys right so the thing about it is you guys are probably like the playstation plus collection if these are a bunch of ps4 games that you could get for free why don't we see this on our ps4 so here's the thing guys right if you currently have a ps4 and you want to get dibs on this and you currently have playstation plus 
here's what you have to do like hopefully you know somebody or you may have a friend that owns a ps5 and what you can do is ask them to log in your account on their ps5 and then claim these games for you once they claim these games for you on their ps5 you then will be able to see them in your library on your playstation 4 and download them so yes even if you have a ps4 you can still have access to all these games and you can add them all to your library you just have to know somebody that has a playstation 5 they just have to log into your account and then claim all the games for you and then you'll be able to access them on your ps4 so there we go with that um playstation now your subscription has expired i mean playstation now is dope but i just have the need for it so this is where you will see your playstation now um now let's go over to some settings actually before i go to settings let's go to media right so this is the games tab like i showed you already this is where all the games are so the ps5 has two tabs games and then this is media so your media tab is where you're going to find all your streaming services and all your movie services right youtube twitch hbo max you know what i mean netflix you know stuff like that any videos you purchased or movies you purchased on the playstation store disney plus so basically any video content you're going to see everything let me see so now let's go to app library this is just where you find more stuff that you haven't seen so more stuff that you haven't seen right like if you had more more apps like obviously all my apps you could already see right because i only have seven but if you're somebody that's a big movie watcher or somebody that likes a lot of video content the the other apps are just going to be hidden in this menu so we went over games went over media let's go over settings right a lot of this stuff is typically regular stuff like if it's stuff that i don't feel like you really need to know i'll just gloss over it the user's guide legal information blah 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 accessibility this is nothing okay so this is maybe something that i'll go over because people talk about this which is the screen reader so this right here the screen reader it basically will read the screen back to you right i'll show you what it what it does screen reader display you hear that Button. screen reader Button. Pre controllers the screen reader reads aloud the text on the screen and provides spoken guidance for operating the console this works only with some features so you can see what it does so it literally just reads everything that's on the screen so that's pretty annoying so if you want to turn that off what you do is i'll go back to show you you go to the settings which is this pinwheel up here where it says settings click that you go down to accessibility you go down to where it says screen reader and then you turn it off and to know it's off it'll be grayed out if you see the white circle that means it's on so we turned it off right um now you have stuff for controllers so if you have custom buttons that you want to assign on your controller i guess you could do that i mean i don't do that so i'm not really gonna do anything and change that um settings so vibration intensity trigger effect uh, uh intensity this is stuff that's exclusive to the dual sense controller because the dual sense controller has those um built-in adaptive triggers and has haptic feedback so if you're somebody that doesn't really want to use these features i would recommend just turning them off and plus it will help uh, prolong the battery to your controller um network this is just connecting to the internet blah 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 users and accounts for any accounts that you may have on your system that that's self-explanatory system console information that shows you stuff about your console system software updates stuff like that pretty pretty self-explanatory stuff you know resetting your console if you wish to do that to reset your console the default settings language date and time like this is stuff that's so that's so um trivial hdmi link this is basically when let's say you have your hdmi device and you want to make your tv turn on with your playstation 5 so since you have i have hdmi device link on the TV is linked to my console. So when I turn my console on, my TV will turn on. And when I turn my console off, my TV will turn off as well. Power saving mode. So this to me is something that's important. Um, power saving mode. So set the time until the PS5 enters rest mode. I mean, for me, I have mine um, during media playback after four hours. 
when playing games, if I'm not playing my game in an hour, then it will just go in rest mode. Because you see, if I'm playing a video, who knows? I may be watching a movie or something. I don't want my PS5 to turn off in an hour while I'm watching a movie. That's why I put after four hours. So if I'm watching a movie that's maybe like three hours or so, my console isn't just going to turn off in the middle of the movie. But while playing games, if I'm not really doing anything for an hour, my console will automatically go into rest mode. Um, features available in rest mode, which is, you know, having power to USB ports, staying connected to the internet to download patches, updates, games, etc. Um, set time until controllers turn off. Okay, this section is important. Because when you guys get your PlayStation 5, your controller is not going to turn off. It's just going to always be on. So when you get your console, this is where it's going to be. Don't turn off. You want to change that. For me, I personally have it after 10 minutes. Meaning that if my controller is not doing anything, it's completely idle for 10 minutes and it just shuts off automatically. It just helps save battery, honestly. Um, web browser, typical stuff. Who cares? Storage. So this shows you the storage of my console console storage as you can see i have 662 no 667.2 gigabytes so the ps5 guys in case you don't know has an 825 gigabyte ssd but after the operating system has been installed it's as you can see it only has 667.2 gigabytes now to be fair as you can see my media gallery i have about 103.9 gigs of footage and stuff that i recorded that i plan to edit later so in reality if i were to delete all the stuff in my media gallery i would literally have more than enough storage to download another game which i am gonna do eventually um so this is just what's on my console usb extended storage as you can see bup slim that stands for backup plus slim which is my two terabyte and this is something that's a really good feature which is I always install ps4 games to usb extended storage so what that means is anytime a PS5 game is going to be downloaded, it's automatically going to be installed into my external hard drive instead of my internal hard drive. Because PS4 games can be played from the internal or the external. But PS5 games, again, can only be played from the internal hard drive. So I want to make sure that any PS4 games I have do not take up any space on my internal storage. And I want to save my internal storage for my precious PS5 games when they do come out with more. Um, let's go to sound, microphone. I mean, this is just self-explanatory. All right. This is something, though, that I want to go over. Sound, microphone, and right here. Microphone status when logged in. So here's what's going to happen, guys, right? So when you log into your PS5 on your account, this is going to be on by default. So what that means is that when you log in, your mic is automatically going to be on on your controller. So on the PS4, you're used to, you know, people not being able to hear you, right? So if you're transitioning from PS4 to PS5, you may just think that it's going to be the same thing. But no, your microphone is always on. So you may be having private conversations. You may be talking about personal stuff that you may not want other people to hear or know. And you completely forget that your microphone is actually on because the controller has a built-in mic. So what I do is I make this mute. So when I log into my PlayStation 5, I make sure that it's muted. I make sure that that my that it stays muted when I lo when I'm logged in. So that way I don't have to worry about saying stuff and you know people hearing it or any personal conversations I may want to have with other people. I would much rather uh say something to someone and forget that I'm muted than than say something and I'm not muted and I didn't mean to say it. If you get my drift. Microphone status when chatting or broadcast. So this right here, I just hit to don't change. Audio output, switch output device automatically. What that means is if I have headphones connected, it's just going to switch to my headphones. And if I have my TV, then, and I don't have headphones, it's going to switch to TV. That's easy, simple enough. Um, screen and video, video output information. As you can see, 2160p resolution, which means that's 4K, native 4K resolution. HDR. Now, I do have HDR, guys. My TV supports HDR10, but the reason why you're not seeing it in this capture is because my capture card doesn't support HDR. So, whenever I'm running my PS5 through my capture card, it doesn't support HDR, but if I'm running my PS5 directly to my TV, I play in HDR all the time. So, really, I have HDR10 on this TV, but you just don't see it here in the capture card. Um, screen, 
dim screen while inactive after 15 minutes. That's just how I leave it. It is what it is. Accessories, right? This is pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I really changed anything here. Okay. There is one thing I am going to go over, right? Um, let's go here to controllers. Again, this was the intensity. This. Brightness of controller indicators. So you guys know what this is. If you have a DualShock 4, then you guys know that big light that, that comes on. Like when you're player 1, I believe that white that light is what? Blue, right? And then if you're player 2, that light on the controller is red. You guys get the drift. So the thing about those lights is that they also drain the battery of the controller. So what I recommend doing is going here to accessories, controllers, brightness of controller indicators, and turning this down to dim. As you can see, it's it has bright standard. So that means when you get your controller factory right out of the box, it's already going to be on standard, the brightest setting. That's going to help drain your battery. So me, I personally just put it on dim. And it's still white enough for you to be able to see, to, to, to see, you know, the colors. So it's not really a big deal, honestly. Everything else is, is self-explanatory, like really. Save data and game and app settings. Um, this is stuff here, console storage, cloud storage, and stuff like that. I just like to sync my save data every now and then. But as you can see, I have auto sync enabled, so I don't really need to do that. So automatically, my save data is just synced to the cloud because I have PlayStation Plus. Automatic updates, I have those online. So what that means is my PS5 will regularly check for updates and automatically install updates while in rest mode. Very easy, very easy stuff. Notifications. This is what I love right here, man. Notifications. I'm going to go over this right now. See if I can show you. Um, allow pop-up notifications, right? So right here, I have my notifications on. I turn them off. But there's one setting that I think, okay, um, okay, here we go, right? Yeah, when friends go online during games, during videos, during podcast broadcast. Okay, this is dope. So as you can see, when friends come online, I basically get notifications when I'm playing games. But when I'm watching videos or broadcasting, I'm not going to see that. You see what I mean? um games right see from games any notifications i make sure that i just go ahead and block out so that way when i'm watching a video on youtube i'm not going to get notified it's dope that the ps5 allows you to do that so you can hide notifications when you're watching videos but then you'll get those notifications when you exit the videos so that way you're not watching a movie or a youtube video or something with family and then you just see a whole big chat you know popping up captures and broadcasts um, self-explanatory video clip format manual recording resolution okay you see for me since I'm ha I have a 4k TV it allows me to record in 4k you may be on a 1080p TV so you may see um, 1080 by 2160 that's what you'll probably see here but if you have a 4k TV this is what you're going to see um, let's go to broadcast video quality this is regarding streaming so the ps5 allows me to stream at 1080p 60 frames per second on the ps4 you can only stream at 720p 60 frames at most but on ps5 it allows you to stream at 1080p 60 frames ps4 only allows you to stream at 720p 60 frames um trophies again this stuff is very self-explanatory um now i'll just go over a little bit of extra stuff right Let's go to my name, online status. I could choose to change that. You know, I'm online right now. I could choose to be busy or appear offline. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of you Mortal Kombat fiends and a lot of people that I play with online, a lot of times I appear offline. Like sometimes when I get home from work, I'll appear offline if I know I'm gonna play like The Last of Us Part Two, because I like to play story games. I don't wanna be interrupted by a whole bunch of notifications again. So. I'll just appear offline and just play my game. And then when I'm ready to play Mortal Kombat, I'll appear online. So that's one tip I'll give to people in general. If you know you're going to play a game that's heavily story uh, oriented and you don't want to be distracted, just appear offline and then play your story game so that way your friends don't distract you. And then when you're done playing that game for that time or that day, hop online and then play your multiplayer game, which is what I do. Right now, I'm playing Last of Us Part Two offline. And then when I hop online, I play basically Mortal Kombat X. 
um let's get back here uh profile this basically shows you everything in your profile um i have 840 trophies earned with 14 platinum trophies shows you all my friends games accolades this is something that's new to playstation 5 i think i don't even know if it's on ps4 maybe it is on ps4 but i wouldn't know but i didn't see it on my ps4 but this is stuff you can give accolades when you're in matches and people can talk about stuff about you like you're helpful you're welcoming you're generous like i believe i received this accolade when i was playing mortal kombat 11 if i believe um one of the cool things here is if i go to games right um it actually will show you how long you played your game so as you can see last of us part 2 I have 22 hours in Last of Us Part 2. Mortal Kombat X, 2,194 hours. Yeah, I put in time when I play my games, bro. 48 hours in Ratchet & Clank. Um, Spider-Man Miles Morales, this is the PS5 version. 30 hours, got the Platinum. Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. So basically, it shows you how many hours you put into your games. Ghost of Tsushima, 101 hours. 157 hours in Tekken 7. It shows you all the time that you put into your uh, games. Right? Um, let's go back here. Trophies. So if you want to see your trophies in another way, you just go here. Boom. You can see all the trophies that you have in your games. Self-explanatory stuff. Um, oh, another thing. So on the controller, you have the, the button, as you know, the PlayStation button that you press. So here's one thing that's different with the PlayStation 5 is when you press that button once, it pulls up this menu which is known as the quick menu so it kind of is weird so before what would happen is when you press this button once it would basically give you your power options well no when you when you held the button down sorry so yeah when you're on ps4 and you hold this button down it basically pulls up the the power options right to turn your ps4 off or on and then when you press it once it brings you to the home screen ps5 those controls are flipped so when I press this button once, that's how I get here to basically access my power options, right? And when I hold this button down, it takes me to the home screen. So it basically is the opposite of the PS4 controls, is basically what it is. So as you can see here is the quick menu, you have your stuff like home, just takes you back to the home screen. Um, switcher, this is how you could switch between your recent games that you have. Last two games I opened was, again, Mortal Kombat X and Last of Us Part 2. Notifications, all my boys that invite me and stuff. Um, game base. This really shows all your parties. So this is where the parties are on PS4. Um, I mean, on PS5. Sorry, not PS4. So this is where all your parties are, right? So I could see everybody that I've talked to recently. Like, if I wanted to open my boy Atlas's conversation, like, Atlas Grudge, messages, shout out to my boy Atlas. Yup, my boy Atlas got that Ghost of Tsushima, if I recall. Don't worry, Atlas, I, I'm, I'm gonna talk to you about that, bro. Dope, dope. But there you go, right? So your parties are very easy, as you can see. And then if I wanna go to my friends, I just go over here and just switch to the friends tab. And now it shows me all my friends. Feel me? Um, Music, that's if you're gonna play music and stuff, link Spotify and stuff like that. Um, Sound headphones blah 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 that's basic stuff mic this is all really basic stuff this is for adjusting your microphone level if you wish to do that um let's go back accessories so this is how you turn off your controller because some people ask that question how do i just turn off my controller if i just want to turn off the controller and then maybe switch to a new one or i want to turn off my controller but not necessarily my console just go to wireless controller and then hit turn off or you could just go to the controller settings like that. Again, here, this is just basically another way to show your profile information. The same one that was up on the top right-hand corner. And then this is how you actually turn the console off. So, very simple. You enter your rest mode here. Turn the PS5 off or restart your PS5. So, the easiest way to turn the console off, I like to say, you press the PlayStation button once. Go all the way down to the right. And then you're at your power options. And it is what it is. And you can even customize these options if you wish to, if you wish to customize this menu. So there you go, guys. That was a basic view and overhaul of the PS5 UI. Just an overview of some games that I also have, what I'm playing, what's currently installed on my system. And I could say that the PlayStation 5 overall is a really great console. 
right now you're not going to see too much stuff because there's not really that many games out for the most part we're really just playing improved versions of last gen games i mean a couple of exclusives are out like sackboy's big adventure astro's playroom you know what i mean spider-man miles morales i mean demon souls hd remake like there are some games that are out but the big game that's going to be coming out is ratchet and clank rift apart and horizon forbidden west and when those games come out, then we're really going to be able to see what the PS5 can do. But for now, guys, it's Baby Boy Fire Dragon CK. Hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Be safe. Peace.